hydropower is power derived from the energy of falling water, which may be harnessed for useful purposes. Hydropower is used primarily to generate electricity. The power is a function of the hydraulic head and flow rate of water. The hydraulic head is proportional to the difference in height through which the water falls. The flow rate of water is the flow available in a stream, which can vary widely from season to season. It is a function of the rainfall, area, vegetation and natural characteristics of the drainage basin. People may build structures to regulate the flow, such as dams and reservoirs, to provide a more dependable source of power by smoothing seasonal changes in water flow. From these criteria, the power potentials of hydropower in Indonesia can be mapped using the available data, maps and other information. The potentials of hydraulic head are obtained from the topographic map. Adequate digital elevation maps derived from satellite with large-scale detail and quantitative representation of ground relief are widely available nowadays. Then, a ground slope map can be made from this topographic map. Our focus is on the relatively steeper ground slopes so that the flat plains are ignored. The hydraulic head is proportional to the stream slope, and it can be approached with the ground slope. In this case, derivative approach is used, where the potentials are measured from the elevation differences per unit length of streams. The higher the slope, the higher the hydraulic head per unit length. Rainfall map shown here is used to estimate the potentials of flow rate of water, along with actual evaporation, drainage basin area and vegetation maps. The deeper the rainfall, the higher the flow rate. Vegetation may affect the flow rate of water in the stream. Forest makes the flow rate more dependable as it stores more water from the rainfall. However, it reduces the average flow rate as it consumes more water for its transpiration. The water from the rain falling on the ground evaporates to the atmosphere due to sunlight and wind. In addition, vegetation consumes water for its transpiration which finally evaporates to the atmosphere as well. This combined process is, is called the evapotranspiration. The map shown here is the average annual height of the actual evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration reduces the rainfall that is available for the flow rate of water in the streams. This available rainfall then becomes the net rainfall, as shown on this map. The drainage basin is a region on the ground where the rainwater falling on it affects the flow in a specific point on the stream. The wider the area of the drainage basin, the higher the rate of flow of water in a specific point on the stream. This map shows the drainage basin area for every point of the streams. Drainage basin area for the streams located on flat plains are ignored. From the above various factors, those are the ground slope the rainfall, the actual evapotranspiration, and the drainage basin area, we can generate the hydropower potentials per unit of stream length. The relative potentials are represented by indices in every point on the stream, as shown on this map. The larger the red dots, the larger the hydropower potential per unit of stream length on that point. The developers must consider the development cost of hydropowers for every region. This map shows the construction cost indices, or IKK, published by the Central Board of Statistics in 2016, which can be used to illustrate the development cost in every region in Indonesia. The potential indices are then corrected in consideration of the development cost, as shown on this map. The independent power producer must also consider the feed and tariff for every PLN's electricity system they will supply. In the present regulation, the feed and tariff is determined by a ministerial decree, as shown on this map. Please note that the tariffs are applicable for the electricity system they will sell to, not the region where the hydropower plants they will build.
The potential indices are then corrected again in consideration of the feed-in tariff, as shown on this map. The distance from the hydropower plant to the electricity grid is also an important point to be considered. This map show the existing and planned PLN's electricity grids, including the substations and transmission lines. From the map of electricity grids, we can calculate the distance of every location of hydropower plant to the nearest substation and generate the indices. Another correction is made to the potential indices considering the distance to the electricity grids, as shown on this map. Many hydropower plants have been built or are under development, marked as the blue dots on this map. Therefore, the potential indices occupied by those plants need to be crossed out. Some of the potentials are in the areas of conservation, indicated by the dark green regions on this map. Though it is possible to develop hydropower plants in these areas, but they may pose complications. There are irrigated areas around the potential sites, as indicated by the green regions on this map. Those areas normally divert water from the streams so that the flow rates available for the hydropower are significantly reduced. Populated areas around the potentials may affect the development, causing social and land acquisition problems, as well as deterioration of the drainage basins. Therefore, they must be taken into consideration. Some of the potentials are located at the settlement areas. They may pose social, land acquisition and land price problems. So, they must be taken into consideration as well. Some of the rivers are used for transportation. Though it is not improbable to develop hydropower plants in those river, but they may pose complications. This map summarizes the hydropower potentials and the restrictions mentioned above. As we can see from this map, the highly attractive potentials are a lot in Kalimantan, lesser in Sumatra, Sulawesi, and Papua, and almost none in Java, Nusa Tenggara Islands and Malaku Islands. A part of those, the developers may also consider the electrification ratio of the regions. Though it depends on the PLN's program, increasing the electrification ratio of the less developed regions can provide support for the equity of electric power supply, thus the equity of nationwide development.